Well, hello and greetings from Skopje, North Macedonia. Got in just the other day and uh, spent yesterday kind of getting situated, supplying my Airbnb, going to the police station and registering like you should do. And I thought this would be a great day to go out and give you my first impression walking around. So what I normally do um, and everyone, you know, on YouTube does it differently, but, you know, you get to a new country and, you know, you got to get the lay of the land and walk around and kind of coordinate, you know, different days for shooting, different segments and things like that. So I normally don't, you know, or at least I haven't done a first impression kind of unscripted uh, city walk. And so I thought I'd do that today. And seeing I just came from two months in Albania, I thought the best place to start in Skopje is their version of Skanderbeg Square. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. But there's actually, you know, one of the things I'll go into as I start doing videos in Skopje is there's a large uh, population of people from Albania in here. So, you know, Skanderbeg is, you know, prominent in that part of the history here. Um, so anyway, again, this is going to be completely unscripted. I'm going to walk around probably the old bazaar and kind of the city center, cultural center, and just get the lay of the land. And as I see something interesting, I'll, uh, you know, stop and get some video. So hopefully you enjoy it. It's a crazy, crazy vibe, this city. Um, you know, again, not to go into too much of the history, but I guess like 80% of Skopje was decimated in the 1963 earthquake. So as they rebuilt it, they tried to make it look like, you know, it's really an old city, which is cool, but they really went overboard and there's like statues everywhere. And it's just like random things all over the place. Um, I think it's kind of a cool vibe. It's crazy. Um, so as we walk around, I'll show you some of it today. So I'll put up a map real quick on just kind of where we are and, and what we're going to cover real quick in this video. So we're starting at the old bazaar and, you know, kind of walking around that area and then making our way across the Vardar River into kind of the I'll call city center area. So, you know, just to give you a visual of where we're starting, straight down that way is the old bazaar. There's the fortress. Down that main road is one of the main shopping malls. More statues. And then, you know, over this courtyard, over that way, we're gonna go and cross the Vardar River into that area. But for now, where we're heading is, put the map up one more time. We're gonna go from here into the old bazaar, which is down that way. And we're gonna see what we can see. So that's Skanderbeg Square, or statue, where we started behind me. Now we're getting into the start of the old bazaar. So this area is actually a little bit, well, I'll say, uh, tourist friendly. It's uh, nicer shops and storefronts.
So one thing I noticed, it's not quite as, uh, although there's cafes, there doesn't seem to be quite as many purely coffee shops. Um, there are some, but it just seemed like Albania had so many. One of the things that I'm noticing is that uh, there's more small restaurants than just small cafes. Which isn't good or bad, just more of an observation. So just below the fortress, looks like they have a really nice kind of park setting and then I won't, I'm not going to the fortress today, but you know, up those stairs is where that fortress is. It's really nice that, uh, you know, they still preserved the old, you know, stone streets. There's some hills here. <laughs> Just millions and millions of side streets. Well, here's all the coffee shops on this row. Had I stand corrected, like I said, this is an unscripted video. It looked like where I was starting didn't have a lot of coffee shops. And well, there wasn't a lot of coffee shops, but once you start getting into some of these other areas, there's quite a bit. So that's cool. For some reason, I really dig the coffee culture. You know? A lot of pastries and sweets go along with coffee shops. So I like that. All right, so part of figuring out where everything is when you're doing research is just going down alleys like this. You see a sign for a hotel in Old City. And you just walk down and figure out what's down here. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Very well, thanks. Are you Germany? No, America. Huh? America? America. Yeah. Oh. How are you doing? I'm Greg. I'm good. Good. Where are you from? I'm here. Too. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And for me, Abbey Valley State. Oh, okay. For me, yeah, Abbey Valley State. To you. Oh, Andrew, how old are you? Thank you. I'm here, Saturday, so to Abbey Valley State. Money. Oh, I don't have any money with me, but happy birthday. Thank you very All right. much. Uh, Ima, one dollar for me? I don't have, I don't carry any money with me when I walk one around. Day, one euro. I, I don't have anything. Thank you. I'm sorry, though. Happy birthday. And so, like I said, unscripted video. <laughs> Generally speaking, when, you know, here's, here's, here's a travel tip that may or may not be agreeable with most people, but if you approach somebody and they're friendly, then they're probably friendly. If you're in a strange country walking around with a GoPro in your hand, like I am right now, the normal thing most people do is look at me like I'm crazy and walk the other way. So when people see you walking with a camera and come up and start talking to you, chances are they're interested in getting something from you. Maybe not, but more often than not, if you approach somebody and they're nice, they're just nice. If a random person approaches you and starts being nice, they probably want something. Doesn't mean you're unsafe. 
but they're usually in it for a buck or two. Just a tip. So, I walked through this area yesterday going to the police station to register and through this gate it seems like you go from more of a like cobblestone old town feel into more of a open market type vibe. You have a lot more of a you know, back in New Jersey, we used to call them flea markets, but you know, generally when you ever see, you know, bras hanging with cars driving by, that's a flea market in my mind. Okay, sorry I cut that short on the last one, but you know, sometimes when you walk through an area, you just, you know, you gotta trust your instincts sometimes and know when to bring the camera out and when to put it away. So, saw some people looking at my camera and, uh, just, you know, most of the time when you travel around, you're completely safe. And, Sometimes when your gut says, hey, maybe you should put the camera away or not go down that alley, then follow your instincts. Sure, nine times out of 10, you're probably overreacting, but then again, <laughs> better safe than sorry, especially when you're new to a country, new to a town like I am. When I was in Albania, when I first started in Albania, I was a little bit more guarded. And then after a while, you get accustomed to things and realize the lay of the land and things like that and you can kind of be a little bit more I don't know less cautious I should say but you still need to be on your guard so far North Macedonia is extremely safe I haven't felt uncomfortable you know when I say I reached an area where I want to put the GoPro away I could be anywhere in the world and feel that way. So it's not really specific to this country. Anyway, I'm rambling, but there's some more of the bazaar. Ah, hello. Hello. Lots of shoes. I'll try and find the open market where there's just a huge amount of food. I'll cut right now. Hey, so I just wanted to go over while I was here. I cut out of the old bazaar just down the street a little ways to this is a local police station. And Yesterday I came down with my Airbnb host and registered. Um, so just for your information, when you arrive in North Macedonia, you have, I think it's 48 hours, but it might be 24 hours to register with the local police. Now, uh, you know, I posted this as a picture on my Instagram account and got one message. So I, I just, I thought I'd bring it up because if one person, says it than other people are thinking it so you know 
in essence, what they said was, well, you don't really have to do it because they don't enforce it. And the chances of you getting caught are pretty low. Talking about registering with the local police. And, you know, it's one of those things, everyone travels differently. I'm not telling you how to live your life, but if, if you travel somewhere to a foreign country and you know you have to do something according to the law, why would you choose not to do that? It just seems silly to me, especially when it comes to immigration type things. So it, it doesn't cost any money. It's not a scam. So there's zero money involved. You fill out a form that takes less than five minutes and you have a receipt. So when you leave the country or cross the border, if asked, you can say, yeah, you, you registered. And you also have to register when you leave. And if you don't have that receipt, then you know, it's not like you go to jail or anything, but you gotta pay a fine. But more importantly, I, I don't know, there's a lot of people on the internet. I would take caution if a traveler is saying that you should knowingly not follow the law. That's an alarm bell for me. You know, it's one thing not to be aware of the law, but if you know you're supposed to do something, you willingly don't do it, that seems silly. You're just taking the risk for no reason. So that's my two cents on that. And as far as, you know, well, where's your sense of adventure? Well, I'm in my 50s and I sold everything I owned that didn't fit into a backpack and decided to give up a pretty solid marketing career in corporate America to be a fucking YouTuber. So I'd say uh, the adventure side is, is there. But just because you're deciding to be adventurous doesn't mean you break the law. So again, my little rant, it's an unscripted video, but I don't know. That comment really bugged me that people are out there telling people not to do something that is against the law. That bothers me. Follow the law and have a good time. Hey. So I think down here is where that uh, food market is. We'll go down here. Yeah, holy cow, what kind of food do you want? Holy shit. Look at this. That's it. This is like they have everything in here. Look how fresh everything looks. Amazing. By the way, I should point out, this old bazaar in North Macedonia is like, it's like the second largest in Europe, I think, next to the one in Turkey. But, don't quote me on that, but this place is immense. I'm not going to cover it all today, and even walk through it all today, which is too big, but scratching the surface. More clothing and jewelry. I want to go back to the food. Two, two, hello. So it looks like fruit, vegetables, spice, and nuts in the middle, and then cheese and per perishables on the side. There's some, some fish, chicken, all kinds of spices and nuts. Ooh, they have fresh dates. This is amazing and 
I'll be honest with you, I live within a two minute walk of this place, so I definitely have to start coming here, not the grocery store. I can't believe this is just around the corner. I'm going to the grocery store. Amazing. Look at this. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And by the way, it, it just I'm a big believer that if something smells, it's not good, right? There's fish, pork, chicken, you know, all kinds of things, perishables. And you don't smell anything like a rotten smell at all. You know what I mean? I mean we've all smelled that. It's just, there's no barnyard or pier smell. It's very fresh and the only things you smell are the different spices that they're selling. It's actually making me hungry. So I think that's a good sign when you know things don't smell. You know, it's generally a, a, a cleanliness vibe for sure, right? Look, I mean, there's just like tons and tons of vendors selling the same stuff. I wonder how you choose which is the best. That Andrew Zimmern guy he always says, follow the pe where people stand in line, but I don't see anybody standing in line. Look at all these spices. I gotta come back and I've been on the hunt for some shoes and flip flops. I gotta come back here. Back out in the open, I think we'll head back to where we started and cross the river and go to that side for a while, see what's over there. And again, I just want to point out that that wasn't all the bizarre, that just, that's just the tip of the iceberg. It's such a huge, huge area that I, you know, I'm going to do a separate video just on that. And even one video probably won't cover all of it. So anyway, pretty interesting. Just wanted to show you as I walked around and kind of scoped out different shots I'm going to do for that video. But hope you enjoyed that. We're going to go to uh, across the river to that area now, show you the monuments and some of the sites there. So one thing I normally try and do when I get to a new city is, you know, look at some, you know, high rises just as, you know, a way of orienting orienting myself when I'm walking around but there's not that many here but there are some again because of the earthquake when they rebuilt they built them lower and safer so anyway but you, you know a word of caution you can't really you know on on a street corner you might say oh there's that big statue I'll keep that in mind but well, you probably can't see in this lens but you know I'll show it to you later but it's every corner has a huge statue <laughs> literally so you know unless you remember the exact type of statue i wouldn't go by statues as a unique identifier anywhere in the city because there, there's a million statues everywhere so go with high rises and the peaks of mountains as you know visual direction points for you when you're walking around been helpful for me so far just a tip okay well made our way down to the Varder River it's not a real boat it's a boat they built into a like a restaurant and club kind of thing and we're gonna walk down this way and this is where it gets Real kind of funky. 
So a lot of the architecture here looks like it's been around for a while, as in like a long time, but it really hasn't. There's an earthquake in 1963 that pretty much pummeled like 80% of the city, it had to be rebuilt. So you can see, you know, attractive looking buildings. They look like they've been here forever, but you know, it's hard to hard to imagine that you know these are only like 70 80 years old or something like that and this is what I'm talking about all those statues you probably read online you know is there a lot of statues in Scropia and the answer is yeah I mean look at all these damn things I think that's a video in it of itself all the statues in Scropia In which the pronunciation, I really try to do my research on this. I've asked locals, my taxi driver, my Airbnb host, and they all pronounce it differently. So I've settled on Scopia. It's kind of a hybrid of all put together. So you get the idea. It's Scopia. Your mileage may vary. Pronounce it how you like. But again, you see that it's very very pleasant to look at I mean other than there's just way too many statues but you know and it's we're getting rain so the cloud cover is blocking the view but I don't know if you can tell there's mountains in between the two buildings there and there's snow on the mountain still so that'll be a nice when it gets clearer out and then all along the river, I mean all along the river, just pedestrian walkway, shops, restaurants, cafes. Yeah, earlier in the video when I was walking around saying that my first impression there wasn't as many cafes, that changed quickly after that statement. That statement did not age well. So, there's plenty of fucking coffee shops. <laughs> In Scropia and statues there's more statues than coffee shops though maybe not close all right so I think I'll put up a map just to show you where we are one more time we started at the at the old bazaar and the fortress was kind of there then walked around and then came over the river. Let me take the map down and... So right there is the fortress where we started out. So right over this building, on the other side of that building, about oh, a couple blocks down is the old bazaar. And then here's another ship that they built. It's a fake ship turned into a restaurant. Again, it's just, they made it, I don't know why they just didn't build a restaurant. I, I don't know. Then, you know, you got more statues every, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Every nine paces, you have a statue. I mean, it's very pretty to look at. It's very different. I'm gonna, cut, I'm gonna show you one building. It reminds me of Darth Vader. So when you cross the river with all the statues, then you come to a courtyard, and you guessed it. Roman columns and statues. And you know, I don't really remember seeing like a National Opera and Ballet House anywhere before. And I think I'll check the calendar and see if either, I've never been to an opera or a ballet because I'm a heathen deep down. But perhaps I should get some culture and go to one of those. Matter of fact, if while I'm here for the next month, if there's one or both, 
I'm gonna go see one or both. I promise. This is this reminds me of Darth Vader. And for you Star Wars people, I forget the name of Darth Vader's chamber in Empire, but it's the one where the helmet comes down on his head and then the it closes in on him. It just reminds me of that. And even like these two arches on the side look like the eyes to the Vader helmet. I don't know. There might be something in my coffee or something, but it just has like a Darth Vader Empire vibe. But so here's the deal with Scropia, in my opinion, so far walking around with you guys. It's, it's really interesting, crazy, fun, all over the place kind of vibe. There's, I don't know. I mean, the people are friendly. Most people speak at least a little bit of English too, by the way. So, you know, it hasn't been a problem with language at all. It, somebody always speaks English, at least enough to answer a question I had. So, that's good and bad, right? I mean, sometimes you want that language barrier. It just makes you feel like you're, you're traveling in a foreign country. But when you, when you want an answer, it's kind of nice. One interesting thing, so I was walking, I was looking for a grocery store the, my first night here, because it was dark when I got here. Or it was just, you know, at sunset, so it was getting dark and I couldn't see well. And my Airbnb host had said that there's a grocery store. Well, I'll take you in there in a second, but right over there, because I live close to here. Um, and so I, I couldn't find it. And I'm asking around, and again, people speak English, I'm asking around for a grocery store, and people are like, yeah, I, there's no grocery store. I was asking the wrong question. It wasn't until somebody said, well, what types of products are you looking for? Ah, then I started saying like eggs and bread and you know things like that. And he goes, oh, no, no, we call that a market. No grocery store, market. So then I started asking people, where's the market? And they just start pointing left and right, like, oh yeah, there it is. So don't ask for a grocery store in Skopje. Ask for a market, if that's what you're looking for. Save you some time and pass it. All right. I think now we're gonna cross the stone bridge, which coming up here after the, the first bridge here is the one we just went over. I'll show you the stone bridge. It's supposed to be the oldest bridge here, but I, again, I think it was destroyed in the earthquake and rebuilt. So I think the tourism board, you know, just got some good marketing people. And because some of the stones they used were from the original that you know, it's, it counts, but I could be wrong. Again, this is an unscripted video, right? So I have to do my fact checking, but I don't, I don't think that bridge has been up standing its entire life. I think there's been some major renovation done to it. Either way, that's the stone bridge. And if you Google map it, it's, it's a tourist attraction. So I'll show it to you. I walked over it yesterday. It looks a lot like that. <laughs> so. All right, we're gonna go. Whoop, we're gonna go over there. I'll pick you up in the courtyard. Okay, we are now on the stone bridge. Making our way into this very nice courtyard. And there's casinos scattered around 
I haven't been in any of them. I don't gamble anymore. I don't gamble, I don't drink, I don't smoke cigarettes or do drugs anymore. So I decided to travel because I had to do something in my fucking boring life. And again, so there's marble statue. It's a bronze statue. Bronze statue, bronze statue, bronze statue, bronze statue, bronze statue, bronze statue. So they got a couple of statues. And so this sprawls out into like five different directions. And down each street are like residences and hotels and office buildings on the top floors. And then on the street level are just all shops and restaurants and things like that. And really nice higher end boutique type shops. So, you know, big difference from the old bazaar area, which is where I'm gonna do my shopping for shoes and stuff like that. But they have really expensive stuff too. So this is the Flamingo Casino. Ooh, wine and chocolate shop. That's nice. I can eat chocolate, I can't drink wine anymore. But wine and chocolate, I haven't had wine and chocolate in a long time. Boy, memories. Why don't I drink anymore? I'm an alcoholic. Sober since September 2007. Aren't you glad you know now? How gorgeous these streets are. I don't know if you pick up kind of the work on the balcony. Those look like cherry blossoms. They're kind of pink violet kind of colors. So they also have the uh, double decker buses here. So on the other side of that street, or streets, as they come out from the courtyard, you have that side street that comes out. They all come out into a main city block. Which is, you know, obviously more of your typical you know, city street, right? Sidewalks, lots of traffic, noise, smell of exhaust, and things like that. So, I'll walk down here a little bit and show you. This should lead to a park with a trade market. So I think I'll pick you up down there a little further. So I'll just show you we're walking along that main city street. Then you come to these little corridors and that brings you into the courtyard where the casino is and the big statue with the fountain and where the river is with the bridges going over it. So. All right. Down there to the park.
Okay, so down that way is where we exited the courtyard and walked down that street. Now we're at the park and you know you got a statue. A lot of walking paths and you know a statue when there's three or four statues down there. There's a statue across the street. So if you have a statue fetish you will really get off in Skopje. It's a niche thing, I know, but if you have that, move to Skopje and you'll just live in a state of orgasm the rest of your life. And then in that building is the trade market, which has a bunch of shops and uh, I think we'll go in there now. I'll show you that. So the best way I can describe this trade market is imagine a mall in the United States but the walls of the mall are removed. So it's just all open air. But the inside looks like a mall. It'll make more sense in a second. See, it's just a mall, but it's just open air. See, there's different levels. So if it's cold outside, it's cold in the mall. And it'll show you the grocery store I go to. Inside, I usually use my cell phone inside grocery stores just because for some reason grocery stores don't like cameras as much. So let me show you inside with my cell phone. So that was the grocery store and I'll show you when we come out on the ground level, so we have to go up one level now, when we come out you'll see where we pick up right by the river again. Do 
Again, just a very, very quirky, unique, multi-vibe city so far. And, you know, we've only scratched the surface. We're in like a two block area. So I'm come out here to this pedestrian walkway and right ahead of us is the opera and ballet house as well as that Darth Vader building and so behind me is the courtyard with the casino and you know the big fountains and things like that so on the other side, or on the other side of that building there, a couple blocks, is the old bazaar, the old stone bridge, the big courtyard with the casino, the walking street, the park on the other side, and you come out here. So we basically made a loop. And, uh, you know, again, this is the tip of the iceberg. We haven't... This is just walking around getting a sense at a very high level what's around. It's nuts. All right, my friends, I think that's going to do it for our walking around and first impressions of Skopje, North Macedonia. Hope you liked the video. Like I had said when I started, it's, it's not something I have done before where it's this kind of unscripted. I basically just filmed you know, what I do when I get to a country for the first time, I walk around the area and, you know, look at Google Maps this morning and then just, I usually walk around and get a lay of the land and things in my mind, what I want to shoot for future videos. So anyway, a bit unscripted and raw, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. At least you got to see some of the sites. And I'm in the country for another month, so a lot of videos coming. Be sure to subscribe so you get notified. And uh, until next time, be you. And like Scropia, be fucking groovy. This place is wild. I can't wait. Can't wait to show you.